See, see I'm, a, I'm a show of hands guy. I'm a math teacher, if you didn't know that, if you weren't at the movie. I teach math at Sherman High School, and so I'm a numbers guy. And so, question I have to you, you don't have to, I mean, if you're too embarrassed or you don't want to answer, you don't have to. But how many in here know someone that's affected by drugs? Maybe your family, maybe uh, a friend, maybe just a lady that lives down the street. If you look around here, it's pretty much everybody. And, you know, Trina's story is awesome because it's like God comes in and just fixes lives and fixes homes and fixes the broken lives. And it's just, it's awesome to see what God's doing in this county and just in the world. But right now, I want to introduce you tonight, tonight's speaker, Josh Nelson. And pretty much from here on, I'm just going to turn it over to him and just let him feel free to do whatever God calls him to do. Good to go? How's everybody doing? Are you sure you're doing good? How many of you guys, I'm doing all right, but I'm a little bit sleepy because I'm getting older and uh, I usually go to bed and stuff, but, uh, but I'm really excited to be at this lockout. I got to tell you guys a little story. Uh, I brought my wife with me today and uh, back when I was a little younger, uh, I met my wife in youth group and uh, We've been married working on five years now, so um, it just brings back real fond memories. <laughs> All right, how many of you guys know what a battle royale is? A battle royale. It's like a brawl. Like it's about to go down. Everybody knows what everybody knows that lingo, right? It's about to go down. So the title of, uh, I'm going to give you guys a little message, and the title of my message is, Where is Our David? And uh, I'm not talking about the youth pastor at this church. But uh, I want to I wanna ask you guys a favor. Uh, this side of the room, I want you guys to stand up and move over that way. Battle Royale, you ready? This side of the room, get up and go that way. All right. Everybody come back to here. Come back to here. Come back to here and pay attention to what's going on. Nope, nope, stop. I'm sorry. What I meant is stop talking and pay attention. That's really what I meant. Um, anyways, I'm just kidding. Ha ha joke. Anyways, we're going to go uh, look into 1 Samuel uh, 18. And this is the story of David. Anybody know the story of David? What happened with David? He killed a giant, right? But that, does anybody know any more details about the story besides that? Five stones. We got five stones. Anybody else? Back there. He did indeed at the, at the end. Well, here's what we're going to do. Everybody sit down. Where you're at? Sit down. All right, we're going to read a little bit of scripture, actually kind of a good bit of scripture. I want you to try really, really, really hard to pay attention. Everybody say, I'm going to pay attention. I'm say, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to pay attention. That's right. There we go. Okay, now. If you look in 1 Samuel and 17, this is where the story of David and Goliath kind of starts. And it says, now the Philistines, you guys are the Philistines. Say, I'm a Philistine. That's right. <laughs> okay, they gathered their armies to do battle. And were gathered at Sakah, I guess that's how you say it, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Sakah and Azkai and Euphes, Damon. Anyways, it's a lot of places, but that's not the moral of the story. And Saul and his men of Israel, Israel's over here, say, I'm Israel! I'm Israel. Palestine. Palestine! Israel! Israel. Palestine. Palestine. Palestine! Israel! Israel. Okay, Palestine, 
has got them outnumbered bad. You guys are looking pretty strong right now, right? Yeah. Israel. Now, Israel's over here. They're kind of shaking in their boots a little bit. Are you, are you guys afraid? No? Okay. All right. They were gathered together, and they were camped in the valley of Elah, and drew up, up in battle array against the Philistines. I'm a Philistine. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side. So act like you guys are standing on a mountain. You're kind of kind of up. See, there's the mountain back there where the chairs are at. Don't go climb on them. But just pretend you're on a mountain. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. You guys got a little bit of a, a little bit of a mountain over here. Don't go climb on chairs. And there was a valley between. So this red area, this is our valley, okay? Everybody see the valley? Okay. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. Where my where Nope, nope, none of you guys are big enough, sorry. Where's our police friend? Where's our police friend? He went to get pizza. Okay, where's our second biggest guy at? Right there. The guy with the beard, that's definitely Goliath. If there was any man in this room that was Goliath, it'd be this burly man right here. Show your muscles. Yes. Now <laughs> Now guys, Palestine. This is your this is your champion right here. You're gonna you might as well just hang it up. Come on over here with the Philistines and hang out. <laughs> this is your champion. This guy can like crumble rocks with his bare hands and and kill squirrels by looking at them and all kinds of crazy stuff. He is a man of a man, right? He's your champion. What's that? Uh, yes, any day. I mean, definitely. Jesus is always more powerful. But right now, this guy's this guy's the powerful guy on your side, okay? Because y'all don't have Jesus. These, actually, one of the guys over here has, has that going on. Oh, Everybody say, oh, Okay. And this guy was six cubits and a, um, and a span, which means he's really big. And he had a bronze helmet on his head. Do you have red hair? It's kind of bronze. It's kind of bronze. And he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. And a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel. And he said to them, Why have you come out to the line up for battle? Tell them. Tell them. Why are y'all here? Am I not a Philistine? And the servants, and you the servants of Saul. Okay, basically what's going on right here, guys, is he's really cutting them down. He, they're, they're really making fun of them now. I mean, th this would be like, like making fun of somebody's mom in, in today's terms. They're really cutting them down now. I'm going to pause real quick. Is everybody good? Sorry, guys. All right. And you're going to basically challenge him. And he says, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we'll be your servants. But if I prevail against you and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Has everybody seen what's going on? You ever been at school and seen a fight break out and everybody circles up and watches? That's kind of what's going on here. Except it's on a lot bigger scale where people die. Okay, So who's the smallest cat over in this area? Stand up and stay right there, okay? When Saul and Israel and all Israel, you can sit back down. I just want to identify who you are. When Saul and all of Israel had heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Everybody, shaking your boots real quick. Oh no, we're afraid. All right. Now David was a son of Ephrodite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man was old, advanced in years, in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to, to follow Saul into the battle. So basically, this guy over here, his three older brothers are in this group. Who's, who's your three older brothers? Three other guys, raise your hand. Right here. Three of the guys. This is, this is your older brothers, okay? Everybody tracking. Now we've got the mean guy over here who's going to just crush everybody. All the Philistines over here are feeling pretty good because your odds are looking like you're in your favor. You guys are looking scared over here, and we got we got uh, David and his three brothers. David's not really here yet, though. 
The names of three sons who went before him were Elab, the firstborn. Next to him was Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. David was the youngest. You're the youngest. You got that, David? All right. And the three oldest followed Saul, but David occasionally went and returned with, from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Everybody tracking? Everybody stand up real quick. Stand up, everybody. Everybody. All right, sit back down. We good? Everybody good? Okay. And as the Philistine, basically what's happened here is David is going to be sent down further in the scripture. I'm going to skip a little bit of this. But David sent down, sent to check on his brothers and take them some rice and some grain. Everybody's getting hungry. You guys are making it so they can't even eat, which, which is bad. And David, you're going to be sent by your father to take your three brothers some food, right? So hop up, run over there and take them some food. <laughs> and basically, okay, we're going to skip down a little bit and it says, So David heard, uh, I'm sorry. You guys started talking, right? Everybody talk. Blah, 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 blah. And stop. David heard you talking. Did you hear him, David? Okay. And basically, what's going on here is you guys are muttering about how this guy's going to crush them. And you guys are over here talking. Everybody talk over here. And you're all afraid. because These guys are all afraid because why? Because you just told them you're going to crush them, didn't you? Well, David... Basically, here's what's going on. And David's this little guy. And he, uh, and he basically speaks up. He says, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this un uh, uh, Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him saying, in a manner saying this, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. And they're talking about, basically, anybody who would go ahead and take care of this guy, your champion here, the king of all these people is going to take care of them. <clears throat> David basically stands up. David, go ahead and stand up. And you tell all your people here that, hey, I'll take care of him, right? I'll take care of him. Because David had faith in God. Now, what are the differences between these two people, guys? All right. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. We'll go about it this way. What are the differences between David and Goliath right here? Yes. He's a lot shorter, right? Somebody from this side. The beard. He definitely has a beard. Definitely has a beard. That is correct. And that's where we're coming to. He is a lot. One day, you're going to grow up and you're going to be able to whoop him. But right now, you can't. Okay? And he, right as of this time, in all reality, you should be able to crush him. Correct? So what's happened is, <clears throat> Goliath, Goliath has come out from your people. Imagine we're sitting, we're all dusty. We got sandals on and man dresses. And you got two nations here. You got nations, two nations here. You got Philistine here and the Israelites over here. Come on, David. Come on, David. And what's happened is, is young David here, out of all the people that's in the room, out of all the Israelites, even the bigger Israelites, David finds it in his heart to stand up to Goliath. Now, if he weren't to do this, you, the army of Palestine, ah, is going to come over, is going to come over, and take on the Israelites, and they're not looking too strong right now, are they? But David here, David here has a heart to believe that God will take care of him, so he steps out. He's got, all, he's got all this armor on. He's got a sword. He's got all this big man gear. 
that he's ready to crush this guy. Well, <clears throat> David comes, and he's, and he's not dressed with much at all. He don't have a whole lot on his side. And so the Israelites try to dress him in his equipment. But David here can't, can't even carry the equipment. Does anybody, anybody know what the battle gear was like at the time? Heavy. Heavy. Really, really heavy. It was all made of solid metal. It'd take a lot more of a man than I am. I, actually, I, you know, I spent five years in the Marine Corps. But, but the stuff that I had to carry in the Marine Corps is absolutely nothing like what Goliath here is packing right now. Guy has got all kinds of crazy gear. Well, where, who wants to be the king over here with the Israelites? You. Come on. So, you try to dress your gear on young David here. And David, you can't carry it. You're a shepherd. You're a young guy. But one day you will be able to. But as of right now, you can't carry it. So, what David does is he uses what he has. He picks up his, he picks up his uh, slingshot. You got your slingshot? You got your slingshot ready? Whirl it around. There you go. And you go find five rocks. And you pick up these five rocks. Well... David steps out and, and he criticizes uh, I'm sorry, Goliath steps out and he criticizes David does anybody know what happens here? anybody know what happens here? what happens is guys what happens is is that David David utilizes what God's given him and he picks up these five rocks in his sling. David stands up and he says, I've, I've freed my sheep from bears with these five rocks. I have seen my God stand up and deliver me when I didn't have a chance. And the significance is, is that David stands up and he does what he can with what God's given him. So the battle royale is about to go down. Everybody stand up for real this time. Everybody stand up. The battle royale is about to go down. Everybody, yeah! Yeah! Okay, okay. Now, now, what's going to happen now is we're going to form up a little bit of a circle like you do in high school when everybody's going, fight, 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 fight. Okay. All right, bring it back in, guys. Pay attention. Here's, here's where it gets good. Goliath here pulls his sword out. Shing, there it went. Shing, everybody hear? Everybody say shing. But what 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 nobody sees what's going on is that because this young man here, everybody, this is real important. Everybody pay attention. Pay attention here. Because this young man knows what God can do, and he knows the power of God. He uses what he has, and he's willing. That's real important that we pay attention to those few things there. He uses what he has, he knows the power of God, and he's willing. So, after he pulls his sword out, David, you pick out one of your rocks. And you roll it around your head, right? Everybody say, whoosh, 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 whoosh. And release. And this rock flies... And it knocks him in the head with the power of the Holy Spirit and he falls out in the floor. Boom! Now, now, bring it back in here. Bring it back in here. What happens is, David comes over here and picks up the sword the guy has. Come on over here, David. Anybody, anybody ever seen, uh, played the video game a long time ago? Did any of you ever play uh, uh, Sega Genesis? Anybody play Sega Genesis? How many of you remember Mortal Kombat? Yeah. And when you when you when he gets uppercut real hard and he comes back down and he says, finish him. Everybody remember that? Well, this is where young David finishes Goliath. Goli uh, David, pick your sword up and take care of him. Whack. Now, now you guys, hey, listen, listen, right here, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. You guys here. Just realize the power of God. 
Everybody go, woof. Okay, now you're, you guys are the ones that are afraid, right? Everybody's shaking their boots. Oh, uh, no. And you take off. Everybody run. Go that way. Go that way. Now, Israel, your turn. Go, ah. Okay. <laughs> All right, I know, I, that was exciting. That was really exciting. Let's bring it back in. Let's bring it back in. The, the Israelites, did everybody see how God just used, just used the willing, right? Everybody understand? Everybody listen? Bring it back in. All right, you can get up. Everybody give Goliath and David a hand. And one last time, for, for old times' sake, Palestine! Uh, uh, Israel! Okay. Okay, everybody come up here as close as you can get and sit down. Sit down. Off the stage. Does anybody know what happened? Hey guys, I need I need about five more minutes, and I'm gonna cut you loose, and I I think you're gonna eat pizza real soon. But but bring it back in for a minute. Bring it back in for a minute. And I skipped over quite a bit of scripture, but it's a lot to read. Okay, everybody, drop it, drop. It. Five more minutes, and you can talk all you want. I want y'all to catch this, okay? What happened after David? Uh, took care of Goliath as people got jealous of him I'm not going to lie to you guys uh, the world's in bad shape have y'all noticed that well the title of this message is where is our David one second guys the title of the message is where is our David I know this was fun but God's going to call out a generation and he's going to ask him to stand up and he's going to ask him to be that David that one that's willing to stand up when all odds are against him when the world's crumbling all around him when there's nobody else willing to stand beside of him and what I want to challenge you is that you get to a place you get your heart to a place that you don't care what the circumstances are who stands with you that you're going to stand for what's right because I'm not going to lie to you guys and I'm not going to sugarcoat it you got a big responsibility coming on you but I got faith in you I really do not because of who you are but because of who lives within you you got all the power that you need you can make a difference the good book says, let no man despise thy youth, and you are that youth. We need a new generation of leaders. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to step up and be that David. When David did this, he was approximately 17 years old, which is maybe a little bit older than some of you, a little bit younger than me, but we're all about the same age, really. We're all the youth of this nation, the youth of this county, and the youth of this country. But he accomplished, he basically saved a whole entire nation from getting creamed because he was willing to stand up. Everybody close your eyes. Imagine that you just graduated high school. You, you go off to college, and now you got to do something with yourself. And all the stuff that you thought was important in high school, what your friends thought or what clothes you wore, are no longer but instead you got responsibilities I want to ask you do you want to live a life that where you, where, you, where you only seek yourself where you only seek things that can benefit you or do you want to go down in the history books do you want people to remember and more importantly when you reach the gates of heaven do you want to hear 
Well done, my good and faithful servant, by your Creator. So I want to ask you this. If everybody will please in the room, just please bow your head and close your eyes. And I, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going you know, to embarrass you by any means. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you have a relationship with Him and not, a, not some kind of religion, will you just slip your hand up and slip it back down? I, I, I just want to pray for you. And can we get a little bit of some kind of music or whatever? Um, I just want you to—I just want to make, extend an offer to you. If if you want to make a difference, if you want to have that power that David had within him and you, it's real easy. All you got to do is choose to accept it. All you got to do is choose to accept it. You can make a difference. So I'm going to ask you, we're going to, here, here and just say, keep your, keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. I'm going, to, I'm going to let the band play some soft music. And if you want to pray, if you want to, get, if you want to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you just want to commit that I'm going to be David, I'm going to stand up when nobody else does, and I'm going to take the responsibility and I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to take a stand. I want to open the altar up. I'll pray with you. We can pray together, or, or you can pray by yourself if you don't want nobody to, do, to be there for you. If everybody will, just go ahead and lift your heads up. Stand up, uh, play something we might know. And I want to extend that offer to you. This could be the most important decision you ever make in your entire life. And it comes a time that, you know, that you come to a crossroads and you got to decide. Am I going to go down the path that everybody else is, that has no meaning, that leads to nothing but selfishness? Or am I going to do something different? Am I going to be a trendsetter? Am I going to make a difference? The altar's open. If you'd like to come pray, come on over. Tell you where you need to go. Tell you who you need to be. How you doing? What do you got in mind? Tell you what you need to know. Like Everything you. inside you know off. there's more than what you've heard So much more than empty conversations Filled with empty words You're on fire when he's near you You're on fire when he speaks You're on time around Give me one more chance to see Show me everything you are Give me one more chance to be near you Yeah When everything Inside me looks like everything I hate. You are the hope I have for change. You are the only chance I'll take. And I'm on fire when you're near me. I'm on fire when you speak. I'm on fire. 
burning at these mysteries these mysteries mysteries standing on I, I would probably venture to say that there's more of you that are that are wanting to, to come out, that are wanting to change and make a difference, but you're afraid of what people are thinking about you. I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. The cool kids in the crowd right now, that's all well and good, but it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. The ones, the ones that might be somewhat left behind in some things, that ain't gonna matter. Who else? Now's the time, guys. I'm standing on the edge of me. I'm standing on the edge of me. I'm standing on the edge of me. I'm standing on the edge. I'm standing on the edge of everything I've never been before. I'm standing on the edge of me. I'm standing on the edge. I'm on fire. When you're near me, I'm on fire when you speak. Yeah, I'm on fire burning at these mysteries. I'm on fire. I'm on fire Yeah, I'm on fire Burning at your mysteries Mysteries jealous for me He loves like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory 
And I realize just how beautiful you are How great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so jealous for me He loves like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy When all love a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions it collapse by glory and realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us all oh how he loves us how he loves us oh he loves us, oh how he loves us, oh how he loves us, oh how he loves He loves us, oh how he loves us, oh He loves And we are his portion And he is our prize Drawn to redemption By the grace in his eyes If grace is an ocean We're all sinking. Is there anybody else? Heaven meets earth like a sloppy way Guys, the embarrassment that you may feel is going to be nothing compared to the relief that you feel by stepping out and doing what's right. Between these regrets when I think about if there's nothing else, if there's nothing else, I want to hear one last Palestine and Israelite roar. Go now. No. Ah! I'm going to turn it back over to your, to your youth pastor or the youth pastor of this church. I really appreciate your time. It's been an honor to be able to spend some time with you, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody give it up for Josh. Did he do an awesome job this evening?